Hello everyone and welcome back to another scrap mechanic video. What I've got for you in this one is a multiple input connector. This is a fantastic little contraption that we came up with in yesterday's live stream. Now as it currently stands there is no way to directly connect multiple inputs to a single controller. You can connect one input to multiple controllers but not the other way around. So this means if you want multiple inputs to control one contraption or device it's sort of not possible but with this video now of course it is. So let me show you this in action. We've got a door over here and we've got a sensor on either side. If we stand in front of it here it opens the door then we can walk through to the other side. Now this is a two-way door because we've got a sensor over here as well and we can activate the same pivot right here which is moving and this section of the door, we can activate it with either sensor. So you can see this one's active, it goes back, that one's active, it will stay up there, which is extremely cool. And it is this little contraption right here that is making it all possible. So what I want you to do is just ignore where the wood is and the controller on top of it. That's sort of the cutoff point. This is the entire contraption right here. It's very small as you can see, and it's really simple to understand and recreate. So first of all, we have a sensor right here and this is attached to the structure which is made out of the concrete blocks and that also has a block right here to block it off from the player um, activating that sensor. Now any blocks that aren't attached to the same structure will actually activate it. So there is a pivot point on the side of this which we can see with that selector and that means this isn't part of the same structure and therefore when it moves downwards in front of the sensor it activates it. So this is quite important in case you happen to uh, walk across so you definitely need a block there. So let's have a look at these controllers on either side. Uh, this one is controlling that pivot, this one is controlling that one there. We can see it like so and then the inputs are going to these right here. Um, so if we open it up you can see that there is the stationary position and then a moving position here as well. So it's stationed just above where the sensor is so it won't be detected then when it, get act it gets activated it moves down like that and it's the same for the one on the other side. Now when you set this up depending on what way um, the game decides the pivot is going to rotate you may have to turn this from either side but that's the basic principle right there 30 is the number to work with 15 um, activates the sensor right there and that's literally it so did I miss anything there let's see um, not really basically the sensor right there is linked to this controller which activates that door and that's how you do it now this can work with more than just two inputs in fact you could probably have quite a lot I don't know if there's a limit to how far that sensor can detect but this right here is the same contraption except now we've hooked it up with four of them so you can see we've got four controllers we've got four little inputs right here you can see how it's wired up when I hold this and then the output is over here. So the sensor is going to go to this controller, which is going to rotate this wheel. So this is going to be our example for seeing it work with four. So step in front of the first one, and there you go, it's active. The second or the third, whatever one of these four, we're standing in front of, that thing keeps spinning. And an interesting thing to point out here is that when you move from one sensor to another, it keeps going. There's no gap or delay or anything like that. Your output will be constant, which is a good thing in my opinion. Um, so that is right there, <laughs> the multiple input connector. And I've also included a couple of extra things in this video as well. We have an AND and a NAND gate over here, which I think are relatively primitive. Maybe we could call this a little bit of a prototype. There might be a better way to do this. Uh, but what AND and NAND gates do, they're logic gates, they deal with multiple inputs and give you a different output depending on what type of gate it is. So over here we've got an AND gate, which is probably the simplest one to understand. If both of our inputs are on, then we get an output. So like what we're doing over here, imagine if you wanted a person to stand on either side of this door for it to open, um, then you would need the AND gate. So let's see that thing in action. If we turn on one input, we don't get an output, this light will turn on when we do. If we turn on the other input, we still don't get an output, but if both are turned on together, then the sensor is activated and we get our output. So only when both inputs are on together do we get an output, which is really cool. Um, over on this side we have the NAND gate, which means anything um, other than them being on at the same time will give us an output. So they're both off, we've got an output right here. If we activate one of them, the output stays on. If we activate the other one, it still stays on. However, when you do both at the same time, it turns off. 
and that is a NAND gate right there. So I'm going to show you how to build the multiple input connector in a second, do a proper tutorial on that. As for these two right here, I'd say these are very sort of basic and quick idea designs. There may be a way to improve them, so if you're interested in rebuilding them, um, I think it's going to take a fair bit of do-it-yourself because I found when setting this up that the pivots sort of go in their own directions and that you have to do them different based on what way the game decided to you know, set it up. Of course you can right click to change but it seemed like something else was interfering with that. So what you have is a stationary position, one will rotate over in 75 and, uh, and then it will go back by 15. So that's the one on this side. Well, sorry, actually, that's the top one, isn't it? The one at the bottom is the one closer to the sensor. That one's just 45 and 15. So if you want to recreate this, you may find you have to sort of uh, twist these or change them around into different directions. But the numbers, theoretically, should be the same. 45 and 15 for the bottom, 75 and 15 for the top. Then over here, we've got the same thing going on. So on the bottom, it's 75 and 15. And then on the top, it's 45 and 15. Okay, we're now going to build the multiple sensor inputs and we're going to start off with a 3x5 platform. Just put a block in the middle at either end and attach your sensor on the side here so it's facing forward. And then you just want to put a block in either of these two positions. Put a pivot on one side, one on the other and then drag your two blocks across like this. That's going to activate the sensor which is absolutely fine. We then want to put a controller here. I like to have them facing upwards so they're nice and uh, recognizable and then we just simply hook up um, the controller to one on either side so if we go into here we need to set it up to um, 30 and then minus 30 I think that's correct and we need to swivel that because it went in the wrong direction and to give this thing a test let's actually hook it up to um, an input back here so we'll do something similar to the door that we've done we'll put an input on either side Nope, we need it to face towards us so it can detect us. There we go. And just hook that up to there. That allows us to test it. There you go. So that one's been set up correctly. If we go over here again, we're going to go 30 and then minus 30. Good stuff. And it's going in the wrong direction. So we flip that. We hook up the input to test it. And we go over here. And yeah, that one works correctly as well. So now what we've got to do is hook up this to something like our output. Um, if we put a controller here and then on top we'll do the pivot and the wheel again as an example hook those all up together like this and then use your controller to control this so I'd recommend putting the uh, loop on here so it goes over and over again when you're standing in front of it so we stand in front of one sensor the wheel starts spinning we stand in front of the other one and there you go we've successfully built it well there you go, that is the contraption. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. As always, thank you for the support. And if you're not subscribed, then consider subscribing because I'm going to be making a lot of scrap mechanic videos. Doing this stuff right here has been an immense amount of fun. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And of course, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this and also the and and the NAND gates as well. I think that stuff over there is going to be real interesting for some advanced logic in the future. But anyway, that's it from me this video. Thank you for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.